Hey everyone, welcome again to Indian Story Read Along. Today's book is going to be The Library Bus by Baram Rehman, illustrated by Gabrielle Grimard. And it takes place during the war in Afghanistan. And during that time, there was a group there that would not allow girls to read or write or or learn anything or even go to school. The library bus came to different cities and it would be just one bus full of uh, books and and a place where everyone could sit down and either read or learn how to read. Let's get started. Arrange the books, clean up, be nice to the other girls. Patty repeats under her breath. You'll be great, Mama says, giving Patty a hug. Today is Patty's first day as Mama's library helper. But this is no ordinary library. This one is on wheels, and it's the only library bus in all of Kabul. Instead of seats, it has so many books that Patty can barely count them all. The streets are still dark when Patty and Mama leave home. Their first stop is a small village tucked in a valley between two gray mountains. A fiery sun rises over the passing fields. A group of girls stands under a giant oak tree waiting patiently. There comes the bus and they're all excited. One little girl waves her chador over here, she shouts. <laughs> Patty opens the back door and everyone climbs in. The girls return the books they borrowed last week and search through the shelves for new books to read. Salam, my girls. Let's make a circle now, Mama says in a calm voice. Everyone pays attention. We are going to practice some English. First, they sing the alphabet song. Then they count from one to ten. There's everyone there. While the lesson ends, when the lesson ends, a girl in a yellow dress skips over to Patty. Are you new here? She asks. What's your name? Do you live here on the bus? Can you print ABC? I can print the letters all the way to Z or Z. She talks very fast. I can print them too, Patty says quickly, but Patty can't even read or write in Farsi yet. Mama starts the bus, and they are off to a refugee camp beyond the mountains. The old city spreads out in front of them like the colorful embroidered scarfs in the Grand Bazaar. Tiny houses, dusty roads, one hill after another, and then a ring of rugged mountains. Patty fidgets with her zipper. When did you learn ACD, Mama? She asks. Oh, you mean ABC. That's the English alphabet, just like Alif Bt in Farsi. Mama takes a deep breath. Grandpa taught me a long time ago. When I was young, girls were not allowed to go to school to learn to read or write. I had to hide in the basement to study. And there's a flashback. They're thinking about that when she was a little girl. Patty wonders if Mama was ever afraid in Grandpa's basement. It is always dark down there. Patty, when you go to school next year, I want you to study hard. Never stop learning. Then you will be free. Tell me now, she adds with a wink. How does learning make you feel? Buddy screams, raising her arms in the air. It is midday when they arrive at the camp. 
Paris sees rows and rows of tents. There is dust everywhere and the kids have patches on their clothes. This is a refugee camp and all the children there are running to the library bus. Mama announces, those who need notebooks and pencils go to Paris and those exchanging books come to me. Paris is surrounded by a crowd of girls asking for school supplies. I need a new pencil, a curly hair sh girl shouts. <laughs> Isn't this some awesome? Another girl squeezes her way to the front of the line. Give me a notebook, she says, jumping up and down with excitement. Soon everyone is ready for a lesson. A, B, C, D, repeat after me. One more time. Mama makes it sound like a beautiful song. A, B, C, Paris sings to herself very softly. As they leave the camp, Paris reads the large letters written on the tents. W, F, P. And the next one is U-N-H-C-R. We'll learn about that at the end of the book. Good job, Paris, Mama cries. You got them right. Paris beams with pride. Back at home, Paris helps Mama make dinner. A bowl of hearty bean shorba with a chunks of potato and carrot. At the table, she asks, Next year, will you teach me to read? There, she's thinking about school. Mama says, you will go to a real school in the city. Why can't those girls go to a real school too? Paddy asks. There are no schools for girls in the village or the camp. They only have the library bus once a week. But I will help them the same way your grandpa helped me. At bedtime, Mama kisses Paris' forehead. You did well today. Paris smiles and gives Mama a snug hug. She thinks about the girls in the village and the girls in the camp. She thinks about the library bus, the new places they will go, and the new girls they will meet tomorrow. And here's a note from the author. He says, there he is. You might wonder what it was like to grow up in Afghanistan. If I tell you that my childhood was okay, you might think I'm joking. Afghanistan has experienced war and human suffering for many years. How could anyone's life there be okay? What I'm saying is that when you are born in war, you are truly unaware of the alternative peace. War is your normal. Yet still, life carries on no matter how long or short your time may be. You go to school or learn at home. You play with your friends. You laugh and cry. You get hurt and heal. And you dream. Big dreams like those of every other child on the planet. I wrote the library bus to tell you that story. The story of strength shown by children in Afghanistan, in particular Afghan girls, in pursuit of education. I also wanted to celebrate female teachers. They are brave and resourceful. In their creative ways, they make it possible for girls to continue their education in spite of many obstacles. Girl Teachers run mobile schools and libraries, provide homeschooling, and so much more. While I have taken the liberty to rearrange some of the events in this book, all of the characters are inspired by the children that I met during my visits to refugee camps and orphanages in Kabul. They are re the real heroes of Afghanistan. I thank each and every one of them from the bottom of my heart. Baram Rahman. A note about refugee camps. When war, famine, or a natural disaster forces large numbers of people to leave their homes, many end up living in refugee camps. These camps have only basic shelters, usually tents. The people who live there don't have access to normal ways of getting food, work, food, or schooling. The letters Paddy reads on the tents at the refugee camp are the names of two organizations that help people in these conditions. The World Food Program, WFP, 
provides food to displaced people. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, protects them. The UNHCR also helps displaced people to return home once it's safe or to begin the long process of finding a new country to settle in. This was the library bus by Bahram Rahman, illustrated by Gabrielle Grimard. If you like the story, think about subscribing to this channel. I'm so glad you joined us today for this amazing story. Join us again next time on Indian Story Read Along.